So students, today we will learn that what is the concept of steady flow energy equation in thermodynamics. We will understand the derivation as well as we will understand it properly. Okay, and in an easy way, I have developed this lecture. So I believe that at the end of this lecture, we will be able to understand what is this concept. So coming to the topic, first of all, I will like to tell you that there is a connected concept over here that is the concept of enthalpy. So in case you don't know the concept of enthalpy, then you can watch that video by this link. However, if you know that, then it's okay because knowing enthalpy is important to learn about this uh, steady flow energy equation. Okay. So suppose that this is a system you can see, and this is the control volume by the dashed line. I am showing a control volume. So to this system from this end, as I am showing by the help of this cursor, a fluid can go in and from this end, the same fluid can come out. Okay. And this is the shaft applied to the system uh, from left hand side. And this is the shaft which is coming out. Suppose that this capital E represents the energy contained per unit mass of this control volume. Suppose I say this control volume has uh, a total energy contained 100 joules and mass is 10 kg, then 100 by 10 is 10 joule per kg. So the control volumes energy per unit mass okay, is represented by E. Now what is steady flow? I told you that fluid will go inside by this end, uh, by this opening and come out by this opening. Okay. Now what is steady flow? Steady flow is the type of flow in which mass flow rate input to the system is exactly equal to the output mass flow rate. Means in case I am saying that mass is going inside with 4 kg per second, with the same mass flow rate it will come out. Then it is called a steady flow and in case it is not there, then that type of flow is called as unsteady flow. So since we are de deriving steady flow energy equation, so we will take the case of steady flow. Okay. Now, suppose that some fluid is going inside to the system from this end, from this opening and coming out from this. Okay. This is the gas system. Okay. And I am taking steady flow. So, suppose uh, for simple to understand, 1 kg per second is the flow rate input of fluid. And same 1 kg per second is coming out because it is steady flow. I already told for steady flow, the mass flow rate in is equals to mass flow rate out. Okay. Now, suppose I am taking uh, this a part of fluid that is say 1 kg fluid is going inside with 1 kg per second so i am taking a unit mass of this fluid which is going inside suppose the velocity with which it is going inside is c1 c1 represents the velocity and this mass is at a height z1 from some datum from the ground similarly it is entering inside with enthalpy content h1 okay and to this shaft left hand side shaft the work input to this system is w1 and when this fluid is entering then the amount of heat input per unit mass is q1 remember this thing this work done is work done per unit mass w represents work per unit mass okay and q represents the heat input per unit mass so work input by the help of this shaft and heat input you can see over here heat is going in and now from the other end when this fluid is coming out, I am again taking the same unit mass. It is coming out with enthalpy content H2, velocity C2 and height from datum is say Z2 and the work output by this shaft from right, right hand side is W2 uh, per unit mass work output and heat output from this output end is Q2 and this is heat output per unit mass. Okay. Now we will talk about the total energy per unit mass input to the system. Input is happening from left hand side. So first of all, we will talk about the kinetic energy input. We can see that it is going in with velocity C1. So C1 square by 2 because it is unit mass. However, uh, kinetic energy is half mv square. Since it is unit mass, so C1 square by 2. Similarly, it is had some height Z1. So it has some potential energy also that is equal to GZ1. H1 is the enthalpy content per unit mass. Work input is w1 per unit mass and heat input is q1 per unit mass similarly at the output end the kinetic energy will be since it is coming out with velocity c2 so c2 square by 2 and it is at a height z2 so potential energy content is gz2 and work output by this shaft right hand shaft is w2 uh, so this and q2 is the heat rejected so q2 over here and h2 is the enthalpy per unit mass okay so this is the total energy uh, permit mass output of the system. Now, here is the crux of derivation of steady flow energy equation. 
that is if we want this e to be constant what is e e is the energy content per unit mass of this control volume if we want this e to be constant then whatever energy input to this system must be exactly equal to the energy output so energy input we have already talked these are the energy inputs and these are the outputs okay so algebraic sum of all those energy content and input and output must be same why it is so suppose i say that the left hand side of this equation is 100 joules per kg and right hand side is 80 joules per kg okay so it is it means they will not be equal so in case the input energy content is higher than output energy content means some energy is remaining inside so that will lead to increment in e similarly in case in input energy content is lower than output energy content it means it will lead to the reduction in e that's it so in case we want this e to be constant that is energy content per unit mass of this control volume then the energy input to the system total energy input must be exactly equals to total energy output so uh, here uh, we can rearrange this equation in case i am uh, taking this q2 toward left hand side it is q1 minus q2 that can be written as del q similarly suppose w1 is taken toward right hand side then uh, it will become w2 minus w1 that can be written as and del w so this is what called as steady flow energy equation that's it okay so in case steady flow is there and we want to keep the total energy content per unit mass of the control volume to be constant then total energy input must be equals to the total energy output of the system through which flow is happening so hope by this small lecture you would have understood uh, what is the concept of steady flow energy equation thank you